I am looking forward to all the hate for this video. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I wouldn't trade him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare as you should be aware. He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. More recently on YouTube, Lauren Sutton posted a speech promoting traditionalism. To keep a long story short, she basically said that traditionalism has more advantages than disadvantages. For this video, I'm not going to argue against traditionalism because I feel as though that people should do what they want in their life. As long as people are not getting hurt, I really have nothing against it. What I'm going to argue in this video are the citations and the arguments that are presented in the speech. Upon further research, I noticed that a lot of her citations are being misrepresented in the speech. Now keep in mind, I'm not going to respond to the entire speech in this video. If you guys want to check out the speech for yourself, the link's in the description box down below. The fewer sexual partners a woman has actually increases the odds of her having a successful marriage later on. Now this is pretty damning stuff. If you look here, if a woman has zero sexual partners before she gets married, she has a 90% chance or around a 90% chance of having a successful marriage later on. That's very nice and all, but where the hell is the citation for that claim? By the way, I am not being a smartass here. She literally has no citations for her claims in the video description. It's a good fucking thing she has slideshows because otherwise, I'll be really lost here. Her slideshow says that all women over 30 years old at the time of the interview were sexually active. When I went to Google for that claim, it led me to an article that was done by the Daily Mail. According to the study itself, they said that they cannot prove one way or the other about the casual associations between the personal and couple factors of the studies. Maybe it's me, but saying that we have no definitive conclusion one way or the other is not saying that we have a definitive conclusion. In other words, she's misrepresenting what the study concluded. How incredibly honest of you. If you are sexist in your relationship, your sex life is allegedly better based on statistics. Sorry guys, <laughs> it's just a fact. The study she referred to is called egalitarianism, housework, and sexual frequency in marriage. According to the study itself, it uses data that's 20 years old. Maybe it's me, but using 20 year old data does not make any logical sense. If you're gonna use data to talk about sex and marriages, why not the most up-to-date data out there? People's attitudes may have changed from over 20 years ago. 20 years ago, we were not in a recession, we didn't have frequent terrorism, basically a lot of stuff changed during that time period. It makes much, much more sense to use data of today to reflect the people today than data from the past. Now this particular part just really got to me. Socialism, feminism, Black Lives Matter, LGBTQ propaganda, the free love movement from the 60s, and globalism, these are all not distinct entities. They are branches from the tree of Marxist thought. Admittedly, I'm not a history buff. I'm terrible at history. However, let's use Google for these claims. According to the wiki page, socialism has been around since 1789. The Communist Manifesto, which was published in 1848, does feature socialism, however, that was years after socialism. Just because Marxism has elements of socialism does not mean that socialism is therefore inherently Marxist. As far as LGBT rights, again, let's use Google for this. The earliest LGBT rights guy I could find on Google is a guy named Jeremy Bentham. He was born in 1748 and died in 1832. According to the essay that was titled Offenses Against Oneself, he argued for the liberalization of laws prohibiting homosexual sex. LGBT rights from its very beginning has always been a human rights issue. As far as intersectional feminism and Black Lives Matter, they're both expired by critical theory. Critical theory uses the idea of the bourgeoisie and the proletariat and replace those two ideas with race as well as sexuality. As far as the very foundation of Black Lives Matter and feminism, 
I will not say that Black Lives Matter and feminism was founded on Marxism alone. Both movements at its core was there to fight against police brutality and to fight for women's liberation. While it's true that both movements became more ideological in their positions, it's safe to say that the foundations didn't have bad intents. I just thought the speech was just so bad, just absolutely terrible. The speech to me was not terrible because the ideas she promoted, it was terrible because of the lack of citations and the misrepresentation of data. Anyway, I just hope I was fair in the response, and uh, take care everybody. Mm -hmm.